Hi, I'm Parker. I'm Candice. I'm Kim. We're all game developers from Skybox Labs, and we each specialize in different parts of game development. In this video, we'll show you how we use the game engine Unity to each contribute to making a game. We'll be working on a Tamagotchi-like game where we pet and feed animals. Currently, the project is only halfway done. We have a cat, but we don't have much to do with it yet. We want to add a cool feature to make the game more fun. Download our game to try the final product. In this video, we're going to show you how to make a game. And at the end, we'll show you where you can learn more about game development and also how to edit our own project. So before we dive into the project, it needs to be designed. And that's where I come in. I'm a game designer, and I've been working at Skybox for two and a half years. Before I started working here, I went to Vancouver Film School for game design. Now I work on new projects in Magic the Gathering Arena. The role of a game designer is like being an architect. We make the plans for the rest of the team to follow. It's really important for us to be good communicators because we have to communicate with other designers, engineering, artists, audio, project managers, and many more. When I start a game design, I always start with a game design document. I'm going to show you how I would start mine. When I design, the first thing I like to do is sketch out kind of the general idea of what I want for the project so I can communicate it to people better. As you can see, I have a super simple drawing now of what I want in the pet game, including the toggles for the pet, the meters, the pet itself, and the kind of interaction buttons that I want. This will be useful because I can reference this in my game design document that I give to the rest of the team. When I start working on a game design, I usually like to start with a gray box. A gray box is a version of the project that's literally just gray boxes to represent where everything's going to go. For 2D projects, I like to use Adobe XD because it's really easy to work in. All right, and as you can see, I've made a really simple diagram to show what I want the game to look like when it's done. Having a visual like this makes it a lot easier for me to communicate with designers, engineers, and artists about what I have in mind for this project. Once I have my wireframes, I start working on the game design document. The game design document is a large document that highlights everything we're working on in the project. It is very important that designers keep this up to date as they are working on features. As you can see down here, I explain different game mechanics, and I also use my wireframes that I've already made to illustrate those. Once I'm satisfied with how I've written out the game mechanics, I'll pass off this document to Kim and Candace to make sure that everything I'm asking for is going to be okay with art and engineering. If it's not, I'll iterate further on the game design, but if it is, we'll start working on the project. However, that doesn't mean that this document is done. As we work on any project, we continue to update the game design document. Some game design documents end up being thousands of pages long, but it's really important because if somebody new joins the team, or even if we need to reference something we did in the past, we can always come back to the game design document to see what we did and what we were thinking. Once I'm done with game design documentation, my job becomes tuning the game in the engine. If you click here, you can actually see some of the variables that I would use to tune the game. Once the game design doc is ready, it's time to start making art. Hi, I'm Candice. I've been a video game animator for four years. In high school, I loved art, theater, and computer science. I wanted to entertain people with art and technology, which led me to get a diploma in animation, art, and design. Let's look at how we made the cat and how we'll help add this feature to the game. Step one, refer to the design document. Artists work very closely with designers and engineers on the games they develop. It's the artist's job to bring the designer's vision to life, taking the story in their heads and putting it on paper. While capturing the designer's vision, you have to understand the technical requirements of the game engine and work with the engineers to make sure the assets you create are implemented into the game properly. Step two, create a concept design. Play around with different shapes and proportions in your sketchbook until you have something that you like. Step three, recreate your concept digitally. Bring the sketch into Photoshop and create the digital version. Make sure that you save your assets as separate body parts. Step four, bring your assets into Unity. Step five, start animating. When making animations, try and find reference from real life. Focus on what action or emotion you're trying to represent and try and make that as clear as possible for your players. Treat each frame as its own drawing, focusing on major poses that get the action with the game design document ready, you can also start creating the prototype. I studied programming for four years at LaSalle College, Vancouver, and I started my first industry job at Skybox Labs two years ago. I'm currently a lead programmer on Magic the Gathering Arena. 
As a software engineer, I'm responsible for the code in the project. Code gives the game functionality. For this portion of the project, we need to add a feed button and functionality to the cat. So we are going to open up our Science World 2020 workspace. From, there's a lot of folders in here, but we only care about the assets folder. From here, we're going to go into the scenes folder and double click on the fluffy pet.unity object. This is our Unity project. So in the middle, we have what's called a scene. This is where all of our objects live, and this is how it will be viewed in the game. On the left, we have the hierarchy, which is where all the objects in the scene live so that we can see them. When you click on an object in the hierarchy, you can see it in the inspector on the right. Um, from here, you can see all of the components and we can edit them as we wish. At the bottom, we have all of the project folders. This is where everything in our game lives. So we have an animations folder, a prefab folders. Prefabs are pre-made objects that we can put in the scene, which show up as blue. We have the scene folder, which is this. We have the source folder, which is where all of our scripts live. We have them in folders called managers and pets. Then we have the sprites folder, which is where all of our sprites for the game live. All right, so currently we have a dog that you can feed and you can cuddle. Right now, when you click the cat, the cat doesn't show up. It's not set up correctly. So we're gonna set it up. If you go into the hierarchy, you'll see we already have a pet prefab in the hierarchy. So what we need to do is we need to add a pet script to the object. We have to make sure it's the pet type of cat. We can give it any settings that we want here, but we'll leave it at default for now. We also need to give it a, happy, a happiness script. This script needs a UI view manager. So we're going to take the UI view manager from the hierarchy and drag it into this spot. Second thing we need to do is on pet canvas, we have a pet manager and the pet manager needs to know that a cat is there. So we're going to drag the cat into the list right here. We're going to set it up so the dog is first. So we're going to hit play. So we have the dog, we click to the cat, and the cat's here! We hit cuddle, she gets excited and jumps us up. Her happiness will go down over time, and then we hit cuddle and her happiness will go up. So Candace was nice enough to add her animations directly to the project for us, so we don't have to import them, all we have to do is hook them up. So in order to hook them up, we are going to go to Window, Animation, and Animation. We are all, we're going to dock that in the bottom of the project, and we're going to do the same thing except bring up the animator. So now, we go back to our scene, we click on our pet dog, we can see down here in the animation that the dog has different animations attached to it. Happy, idle, which is what we call just the resting state of an object. Etc. And if we click on our animator, we can see all the different states that our animation can be in. This is the new animation that Candace added, which is pet happy. So all we have to do to get it working is we make a transition in our animation state machine. And we add a parameter here, which we're going to use cuddle because the programmers already set that up for us. And if we go back to the project, when we pet the dog, she should dance. Super easy. As you can see on the game, the dog has a feed button that when you click, his progress bar goes up. When you click on the cat, that feed button doesn't show up, so we have to hook up that feed button. All you need to do is you need to uh, give the cat a hunger script. This will allow the cat to get hungry and the feed button to show up. 
as you can see, the same on the happiness script. We need to give this script a UI view manager. So again, we'll drag the UI view manager from the left on the hierarchy into the script here. Now when we hit play and click on the cat, we now have the feed button. When the progress bar goes down, we can feed the cat and its progress bar will go up. And here's our final product. We have our pet, we have a hunger meter, and we have a happiness meter. Both can be moved up by cuddling and feeding your pet, as you can see the bar filled. We also have a menu where we can adjust the tuning variables we used on our pet. So this one will mean that when the pet gets hungrier, he will get a lot more hungrier than he was before. If we let the bar fill all the way down, we can see the animations be hooked up from canvas. And if we feed the pet, he goes back to being happy. Same with cuddling. He jumps around and gets happy. And he's out of food, so he's sad again. Thank you so much for watching. Like I mentioned earlier, we have a link to the project. So you can try it out for yourself and try tuning the game. If you install Unity, you can download the project and open it. We left the cat unhooked so you can try to follow along with the video. For an extra challenge, we added everything you would need to add the bunny to the game. It's not easy, but if you follow the logic we used for the cat and the dog, you should be able to add the bunny.